In this lecture, we are going to see how we can actually keep listening the message from the message queue that we have from the RabbitMQ. So we have written the listen message queue in our earlier lecture, but we have not really used this message anywhere so that we could be able to keep listening for that particular message. So in order to do that, we are going to be writing another service. And this time the service is nothing but the background service. So I'm just going to call this as RabbitMQ service. And I'm going to use the background service of .NET, which can help us to keep listening for any of the method that you give inside that particular execute async method. So over here, what we're trying to do is we are going to listen for the listen message queue that we have within our RabbitMQ service, which is this guy. And then we will see how we could able to read the message and store into our database as well as perform the rest of the operation. So now for the execute async method, you can see that we have a cancellation token, which means this is particularly going to be instantiated using a start async thread as well. So we have to also have a start async thread for that. So I'm going to say public override start async method something like this and i'm going to pass the cancellation token of the cancellation token over here uh, within this i'm also going to tell that we need to return base dot start async where i'm going to pass this cancellation token there we go and now within this execute async method we are going to call the listen message queue method that we have created. But the way we're going to do it is using this irabbitmq utility because we need to somehow add it over there so that we could be able to access it via the dependency injection concept that we always use. So I'm going to copy this particular method from here. I'm going to paste it over here because we need to be having a declaration of that particular method, this particular interface. And I also need to go to the rabbitmq service where I can create a constructor. So I'm going to call the constructor and I'm going to call the I rabbit MQ utility of the rabbit MQ utility. And then I'm going to create a read only property field. And now I can then call a weight of underscore rabbit MQ utility dot listen message to the queue. And the routing key is nothing but the inventory dot product which we are going to be listening to and then i need to pass the cancellation token which is nothing but the i think it's the stop can stop token something like this that's it and because this is an asynchronous code we also need to write an async method there so as you can see that now this method is completely written over here but we need to somehow register this rabbit mq service within our program.cs file also, I think we forgot registering this irabbitmq in our earlier lecture, so we need to do that as well. So we're going to go to this program.cs file over here, and then we're going to say builder services dot add singleton of irabbitmq of the rabbitmq utility. That is number one, and we also need to add hosted service, which is nothing but the rabbitmq service. So these are the two things that we really require to be added. If not, we can't really run this particular code. So I think the code is fully been implemented right now. And all we need to do is we need to run this code and see how this code is actually going to work. But before that, let's put a breakpoint over here. Now let's try to debug this code and see if this code is actually going to work or not. Because we want to see that this particular service is going to be executed or being called while the application actually starts running. So you can see that once the code execution starts, this particular listen message queue is actually being spawned up. So now let's try to run this particular code over here so that the consumer will load up. Let me try refreshing it. There we go. The customer is load up uh, and then we have the product. So I'm going to try it out and I'm going to send the new product. So instead of two, probably I'm going to give four. And this time I'm going to say speakers 
something like that and I'm gonna create 100 speakers and I'm gonna hit execute so now that I have did a posting which is from the producer from the inventory I would expect the consumer to be consuming this message for me over here but I have not seen any of breakpoint being hit over here so but still I'm gonna do a try it out you will notice that there is no message here so basically while we use this rabbit MQ background service we should automatically see any of the message being called over here at least the breakpoint should be hit over here and the writer ID is even more intelligent to tell you that this start async method is not even being called you can see that it is telling you that it's a redundant method of override where it's gonna just abort the service once it has been started so why is it even saying this in first place well to answer this question we are gonna make a series of refactoring in this particular so that this code is gonna start making even more sense well the first refactor that I could able to imagine is that we could able to move the connection that we are doing over here in the listen message because there are two places where we have did it we could just essentially move this to one place we don't even have to do in many different places to really do this particular connection and this is going to in turn create one more better coding refactoring as well let's start refactoring this particular method which we are currently interested in so I'm going to cut this particular code. You can see that the channel is currently missing. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a I model, which is going to be a rabbit MQ client of the channel over here. So this is the interface that we require. And this is the exact same thing that we need to update within our I rabbit MQ as well. So I model of the channel, something like this. We need to do that and let's import the rabbit mq client not the microsoft's own uh, model and then we're gonna go to our rabbit mq service over here and on the start async method i'm going to paste this particular line of code over here right i think i'll just control f that so this is the one which i'm talking about so once we have this connection over here I can also do create the, the i model over here. So private i model of underscore channel. I also read required for the connection. So I'm gonna just get rid of this connection over here to connection and this particular thing as underscore channel. Something like this, right? And this can be the connection as well. And once we have that we can then start using this connect this channel that we have created into this particular method as a parameter something like this and it is done and once the whole execution is done we can then close the connection using the stop async method that we can create by overriding it something like this so this is the one which is going to do the stopping off or the closing of the connection from the rabbit mq so that it's not open all the time that's it this is the first thing this is the next change that we have to do over here and now if you go to the listen message mq's implementation over here you will notice that we have removed this particular part at the moment and we have not used this publish message queue so far so so far we can leave this guy as it is but then we can really refactor the way how we can make this connections and stuff but as of now let it this be like this we don't have to worry about it so these are some of the refactor that we need to do over here and once this is done you will then notice that the code should start working for us so i'm gonna put a breakpoint here and then i'm gonna put a breakpoint here and i'm gonna debug it but before i'm gonna do that because we have some clunky updates i'm gonna get rid of the uh, existing db which is the product db as well as the customer db and i'm gonna debug the code So you can see that the start async is now being triggered which is great so i can just run this and also run this code so you can see that the inventory is over here and the customer is here as well 
So I'm gonna create or post a new product this time. So this is when be the first time which I'm gonna be doing because the product database has been deleted. So I'm gonna say keyboard and I'm gonna create 200 keyboards. I'm gonna hit execute. So hopefully the keyboard has been created. And then if I go to the EDA customer this time, and while I try getting the product over here, you will still notice that the products are not coming up. The reason why the products are still not coming up for us is because we then have to make one of the most important change within our start async's connection factory method. And this is where I really wanted to show you why the code change is even not making any changes so far. And the change is nothing but we have to enable the dispatch consumers async method property to true. Only if we do that, it is going to dispatch the consumer's async method uh, for accessing all the topics as an asynchronous operation. If not, this particular execution is never going to happen. And now if I just try to run this and I'm very sure that this code is now gonna work, I'm not even gonna debug it. And now if I go back to the inventory, try it out. And then if, let's say if I'm gonna get rid of this guy, and instead of six, I'll put a nine, and say mouse to 200. And if I execute this, and if I go back to the products, and if I execute this time, you will notice that we have the mouse coming in, which means now our consumer is also working, guys. Congratulations. You have successfully came all the way through over here to see how this event driven architecture is working so now if i go back to the consumer of a rabbit mq for the product you will notice that we have a spike and it is also listening for the product topic from here which is great so now that we have our producer which is going to produce the message and also there is a listener which is going to listen the inventory product queue for us and that's the greatest thing that we have did so far so this code is almost ready for us to do a lot of magics for us already. The last operation which we probably have to do before we even refactor is we need to do the exact same thing for the inventory side, which is going to be the EDA inventory, to consume the message which has been sent by the EDA consumer while we do any of the change in the consumer side to consume the products count from 200 to probably 50 and then making it to 150 something like that so we need to make the changes in the eda customer and also to the eda inventories so that we can achieve these operations which we'll be doing in our next lecture